this is really a crucial subject, particularly when you're trying to do your lawns yourself. You really need to be cognizant of what's happening and how you might be unwittingly polluting the environment with some of the things that you put out. And spreading products on your lawn is the major way that we see these basis of pollution. And we just finished our Healthy Yards Clear Streams and had a number of questions where this is concerned. So this is a really timely topic. And when we think about our waterways, and particularly for us, it would be our streams and other Missouri groundwater sources, we need to be cognizant that when we put fertilizer out in particular, that we can really alter the microflora and particularly promote algal blooms through phosphorus and nitrogen runoff. So this is just an article that was in the National Geographic in April 2013, just showing how predominant, you know, these are obviously larger bodies of water, but we also can really alter and again, pollute our streams and waterways by misapplication of fertilizers and also pesticides. So it's important to realize that when fertilization, and this is where most of this will occur, we want to fertilize the plant when it's actively growing. So most of our lawns in Missouri are going to be cool season. They're going to be either tall fescue or tall fescue mixed with Kentucky bluegrass. We're going to get most of our growth in the spring and the fall. And normally in the fall is the best time to put the fertilizer out. With zoysia grass, which is about 10 to 15% of our home lawns, that really is going to be exactly the opposite. And most of our fertilizer is going to be going out in the summer during the heat of summer. This is an approximate nitrogen application scheduling. And you'll notice that I focus most of our fertilizer recommendations on nitrogen because nitrogen is mobile in the plant. It moves to the growing leaf tip. And when we mow it off, we actually harvest off that nitrogen. So most of the needs that we have for our lawns are going to be from nitrogen. Now, that's not to say that we don't have other needs, particularly phosphorus and potassium, but we're really going to garner those needs from our soil tests. This is going to be an annual nitrogen scheduling that you're going to need. So for cool season lawns, you can see there in April, we're going to need about a half a pound, preferably in a slow release. May, June, and July, particularly in a year like this year, which we've been very cool and had a lot of rain, we're going to want to probably supplement a little bit. And you can see there, and it's just a little bit, a quarter pound to a half a pound, and maybe pick two out of the three of those months, or maybe just one if you're going to use a half a pound, just to supplement through, because we've had a lot of growth this spring. And then September and October is when you're going to load most of that down. If you look into the warm season lawns, there's zoysia grass and way down south Bermuda grass in southern Missouri, you're going to see it's exactly the opposite. You're going to put most of your fertilizer out in May, June, July, and August, and most of your nitrogen out. So the first step is knowing how to calculate your fertilizer amounts. And I realize that there are a number of easier systems out there where you're just going to plug something in and you're just going to feel like you can just go. Well, that's really not the way to do things. And particularly here where we have such varying environments in our transition zone. Because like I said, this year is a year where we probably need some supplemental nitrogen and we don't want to go out with a full pound. So on the top there, it says if you want to take a half a pound, which you might do now, and notice the fertilizer ratio is there. So 24% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, which is normal. Most of the time in established lawn, you're not going to want to put phosphorus down unless the soil test indicates it. And probably a little bit of potassium. If we want a half a pound of nitrogen, we're gonna divide that by 0.24. And what that's gonna give us is the amount of fertilizer we're actually gonna put out per thousand square feet. So with that 2.08 pounds of fertilizer, you're also gonna get about a quarter of a pound of potassium along with it. Now, everything you see here is expressed in terms of thousand square feet. So therefore, it's critical that you know the size of your lawn. So there are a number of ways to do this. You can go out with a tape measure, kind of the old fashioned ways and put all of the rectangles together to figure out the size of your lawn. So in the back there, you'd have about 2,630 square feet. Add all of those components together to know how much lawn that you're fertilizing. When you get that and you know that you need a half a pound, in this particular case, the lawn is 5,374 square feet. So 2.08 pounds of fertilizer times 5.374 is gonna yield 11.2 pounds of fertilizer total. So if you have a 20 pound bag, you're gonna to wanna to squeeze that bag to about half or a little bit over half or even better weigh it. And when it comes to these larger areas, it's gonna be easier and you're gonna get a better coverage if you split that in half and go in two directions. 
So particularly in the backyard there, which is a little bit bigger, you might want to split that in half and maybe even the front yard and do it in two directions. Now there is an easier way. Brad Friesenberg, my, my predecessor who is now retired, developed this lawn fertilizer calculator app. And this is off the website that you see listed here, this Ag Eb website. And you can see there at the very top, the first thing it asks you is how many square feet are you applying to? And again, this just illustrates how critical it is to know this. So you'll go and if you don't know, you can click where it says click here, and then you can actually enter it there by measuring it. And it'll kind of give you some idea of how to do that. The best way is probably option one, which will take you to a Google map and you can type in your address and actually zoom in to a satellite image. So it'll default to map. So click on to satellite, which you see there, and you can actually trace out the areas in your front side and backyard and add all those together. And that is the easiest way, and it is really close. We actually use this for our research plots as well. So in this case, this lawn would be 5,847 square feet if you add the front, back, and side, as I've done here. Another way to do this is that acme.com, that planometer is another way to do this with satellite imagery. Now, when it comes to granular pesticide products, you need to make sure that you read, understand, and abide by that label. Most of those rates are gonna be in the pounds of the product per thousand square feet. So you're not gonna have to use any kind of ratio to determine how much product to put out. Make sure that you are thinking about pollinator species. The first easiest way is don't use pesticides unless they're absolutely necessary. I would say that does not just apply to insecticides, but also fungicides and herbicides as well. They all can impact pollinators. Make sure that you're mowing lawns before application. That'll cut off the flowers, but also chase off some of the pollinators. Don't treat your weedier flowering areas, particularly clover. Try to use buffer strips around flowering landscapes. So if you have a little rose garden, maybe use a three to five foot buffer around that so that you're not applying anything close to it. Try to apply early in the morning or at dusk when bees are less likely to be foraging. Bees do forage when it's about 50 to 55 degrees or higher, but for the most part, if you do it early in the morning or at dusk, you'll have less bee traffic and less pollinator traffic. And then last but not least, water the product in immediately. In particular, most of these granulars need to be watered anyway. And if you water them in immediately, you will greatly lessen the chance that you're going to impact any of the pollinators. Last but not least, number four there, protect yourself. Always use gloves. I don't care what that label says or doesn't say. And we also advocate shoes, long pants, and sleeves whenever you're putting any of these granular pesticides on. When you're loading any of the products, fertilizer or pesticides, try to do so on impervious surfaces. Try to do so on the lawn, on a level spot of your lawn. If you have a spill there, the worst that happens is that you might have a little bit of burn in your lawn. That's much better than having a spill and having it get into a gutter, which would lead directly into our streams and waterways. Make sure that you're cleaning up all your spills. This is obviously an egregious case. All of that fertilizer that's busted there is gonna go directly into the gutter. And then make sure that you're thinking about the environmental responsibility. The case there on the left, that's one of my neighbors. Um, and basically those grass clippings, you would think, oh, the homeowners might just think it's messy. Um, but remember what I said about nitrogen, that it moves to the growing leaf tip. So when those clippings go down and they go down into the stormwater system, they're carrying the nitrogen along with them. It's not a lot, but if you think about all the lawns and how we're connected to our streams and waterways by our concrete highways, they can amount to quite a bit. So I will say that the most environmentally responsible item that you have and piece of equipment is your blower. So whenever you mow, Go ahead and blow all those clippings back onto your lawn. They are free nitrogen, so we also like mulching decks, but blow them back on. And then also, anytime you use a spreader and you spread anything that is a solid, blow all of that material back onto your lawn where it can be used and captured. I don't care how good you think you are and you don't think any of those fertilizer or pesticide prills got onto the sidewalks and driveways and roads. I guarantee you they did. So make sure that you're blowing all that back on so that you help protect our streams and waterways. And quite frankly, so you get all the product that you paid for.